Here in our next example on conservation of energy, we're going to look at the spring. Obviously, when you compress a spring or elongate a spring, you can store energy in that spring, as we have done here. We have a spring of spring constant 400 newtons per meter, and we've compressed it at a distance of 60, 60 centimeters. 60 meters will be quite a spring. And then we put a block in front of the spring with a mass of 2 kilograms, we hold it in place, and then we let go. And all the energy stored in the spring will then be used to accelerate and move the block outward. And of course, eventually, since there's friction on the floor, so the friction between the block and the ground, the energy will be lost and the block will come to a stop. The question is, how far did the block go? Now here's an interesting concept, because it's really a two-step problem. The first thing that happens is the block, will excel, the block will be accelerated by the release of energy of the spring, and then the block will be slowed down as it moves towards the end. But we really, just like with a roller coaster, don't really care what happens in between. We only care about the initial state and the final state. And what goes on in between is not important, except, of course, the, the work being done to overcome friction. We do take that into account, but we don't have to worry about the acceleration and deacceleration, nothing like that. We can simply look at the initial state and the final state and get the correct answer. So let's try that. So we can say energy initial equals energy final, which means that any work put into the system plus the uh, potential energy initial plus the kinetic energy initial must equal the uh, potential energy final plus the kinetic energy final plus any energy lost by overcoming friction. Now, you may say there's work done because we have to compress the spring. Well, either you account for it by the work done to compress the spring or account for it by the energy already stored in the spring and then we don't have to take into account the work done. So in this case, we could say the work done was done prior to the problem got started. Energy was already stored in the spring, so we don't have to worry about that. Potential energy stored in the spring, yes, we have. No kinetic energy because nothing is moving at the moment we let go of the block, so zero kinetic energy. There's not going to be any potential energy final because there's no altitude gain, no height gain, so there's no final potential energy. The block will not be moving at the end, so that's zero kinetic energy. So really what happens now is it's a simple equation where the initial potential energy stored in a compressed spring, will all of it will be used to overcome the energy lost, E lost. And now we just have to figure out what those things are. For the potential energy initial, the energy stored in the spring is 1 half kx squared, k being the spring constant and x being the distance that the spring was compressed. Of course, we'll have to convert that to meters. And the energy loss is going to be equal to the friction force that we have to overcome times the distance that we have to travel. And of course, that's what we're looking for. That's the variable we're going to be solving. The friction force on a flat surface, remember there's going to be the weight of the block pushing down, mg. We're going to have the normal force pushing back from the floor upward, normal force, which is equal in magnitude to mg, of course, opposite in direction. And then the friction force will, of course, be in the direction opposite of its motion, so the friction force will be in this direction. That will be equal to the normal force times mu, so in this case that's going to be mg mu, so we can replace this for this, and then finally our equation becomes 1 half kx squared is going to be equal to mg mu times d. And then this equation we have to solve for the distance traveled. So we're going to divide both sides by mg mu. So when we write that over here, we can say that d is equal to the left side of the equation, which is 1 half kx squared divided by mg mu, and all we have to do is plug in the values that we have. So this is equal to 1 half times k is 400 newtons per meter. The distance is 0 0.6 meters, and we have to square that and divide the whole thing by the mass, which is 2 kilograms, times g, which is 9.8 meters per second squared, times mu, which was 0 0.3. And then we need a calculator to figure out what that is equal to. All right, so we have, uh, might as well place those down there. So we have a 0.6 squared times half of 400, that's times 200, divide by 2, divide by 9.8, and divide by 0.3, and we get 12.24 meters. So just call it 12.2 meters. 
And that's how far that block will slide before coming to an end. So that means that all the energy stored in the spring by compressing it will be used to overcome the friction, making the block travel a distance of 12.2 meters before all the energy has been expended overcoming that friction. And that's how you do that problem.